Good morning, and I'm glad you're with me this morning. We're going to consider Psalm 112, and I want to read it in its entirety. So if you have a Bible nearby and you want to grab it, uh, please do so and follow along with me. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversaries. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. The wicked man sees it and is angry. He gnashes his teeth and melts away. The desire of the wicked will perish. Well, Psalm 112 describes the character of a godly person a person who fears the Lord and obeys the Lord. It describes a person who seeks to be like God in his or her character. Verse one says they fear God. And we often say that the fear of the Lord is more a deep reverence for God than it is a shaking in terror. And that's true. But at the same time, we must not lose sight of the fact that God is holy, God is majestic, and God is frightening to those who oppose him. The godly woman or man will never take God lightly. The godly man or woman will obey God's commands and they will also delight in obeying God. They're going to seek to obey God in every situation and they're going to find great joy in obeying the Lord. The Psalm then goes on in verses two to nine to speak of the blessings for the person who fears the Lord and delights in obeying the Lord. Verse two, there is might for the person who is upright and also for his or her offspring. Might here probably has more to do with good standing uh, in one's community than in physical might. Verse nine says something similar when it says this righteous person will have honor. Now this is a general observation it doesn't mean everyone will be honored in their community just because they walk with the Lord. In fact, sometimes just the opposite occurs as we are mocked and ridiculed and even persecuted. It also doesn't mean that every child of the godly will turn out to be upright citizens. Obviously, some stray. But the Lord certainly notices our uprightness and our walking with him, and we have good standing with God. Verse three goes even farther and promises wealth and riches for the righteous. Jesus in Mark 10 verses 29 to 30 made a similar promise when he said, truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sister or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time and in the age to come eternal life. But I think we must be careful here and not promote health and wealth gospel. Further, we all know people who are righteous and poor. My grandmother was a saint if there ever was one, and she never had more than just enough to make ends meet. But I think the general observation is that the Lord does bless those who walk with him. He delights in seeing us do well, and he delights in giving us good things. And though this life may have its troubles, God will certainly ultimately bless us with riches untold as he gives us eternal life. Well, in verse four, we're promised that the light of God dawns upon those who are gracious, merciful, and righteous. And light is a sign of blessing. God shines his blessings upon those who model his character. For over and over again, the Bible teaches us that God himself is gracious and merciful and righteous. Verse five says it, it is well with the man or woman who is generous 
and lends and is just. Now we all know that people in this life can take advantage of our generosity. But the Lord is very pleased when we live in this manner. For such a life again models the Lord's character. As the Lord has been generous with us and just with us, so we should be with others. Verses six to eight speak of the steadiness, the stability of the person who walks with the Lord. Now, the psalmist here speaks of not being moved, of, of not being afraid of bad news and, and our hearts being firm and steady. I don't think this means we'll never have doubts or fears, nor does it indicate that our faith is weak when we do have doubts and fears. It's human to have those. But the person who fears the Lord and delights in obeying him is going to remain steadfast despite those doubts and those fears. The Lord is going to hold them and encourage them and strengthen them to come through the storms of life. Well, verse 10 uh, contrasts the wicked with those who fear the Lord and says the wicked will be angry and gnash their teeth. They may not in this life, for the wicked are often content with themselves and they even prosper. But the Bible is very clear that they will perish. Jesus indeed describes hell in Matthew 8 verse 12 as a place of darkness and eternal weeping and gnashing of teeth. However, if you are a believer in Christ, please do not delight that the wicked will get there someday. Instead, pray for them and do your part to bring them to Christ. And if you happen to be one of those who have, who have denied Christ, please do not wait until it's too late. Please come to Jesus today. Life here will still have its challenges. That's just part of being human. But you will face those challenges with hope. Further, I, want to, I promise you, it's very clear in God's word that Jesus loves you and he does not want you to perish. So please, trust in Christ this very day. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord, we are so grateful that you delight in us when we trust in you. We thank you for granting us blessings and right standing with you when we trust in Christ and model that trust by living in accordance with your character. We're so grateful for your steadfast love and mercy. Therefore, we seek to offer love and mercy to others. Lord, you're so generous and just to us. Therefore, we seek to be likewise with others. And Lord, like you, we do not want anyone to perish. So send us out to share your good news and your amazing love with others. And Lord, if there's one listening who has stood against you and is angry towards you and towards your people, melt their hearts of stone this very day. Draw them unto yourself. Reveal your love for them. Help them see your love is so great that you do not want them to perish despite their current state of rebellion. Have mercy on us all, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, have a great week, folks. God bless you all. Goodbye.